Okay, uh, I just want to show you uh, one of my newly acquired acquisitions. It's the MEC 9000. It's a hydraulically operated uh, shotgun, shot shell rather, reloading machine, similar to the um, the grabber, which is mechanically uh, operated by hand. That's that's my old machine right there. This is the new machine. And supposedly it's much quicker. I just got it yesterday. And uh, hopefully this doesn't make too much noise. As you, as you can see, it's similarly built to uh, as the uh, the grabber. And the only difference is it's uh, operated manual or hydraulically. Time I push the pedal down, new round. I suppose when I get more proficient with it, I'll be faster. Like the grabber, it has uh, six loading positions. Uh, one position or one stage that does one particular uh, process. And when I hit the pedal on the floor, I get one round. Process is simple. All you got to do is insert a, uh, a hull and a wad and then press down. It rotates automatically when you lift the pedal up. And then it comes down, feeding the wad and crimping. And like I said, there's six stations on here, so you've got six, six or seven operations occurring at one time. Hull, wad, you press the pedal, you let go, it rotates. Okay, I want to take a moment to explain the various stages of the reloading process for this MEC 9000. The MEC, which is a progressive reloader, has six stages, like its companion reloader, the grabber. It has six stages also, and there are a number of different processes that are going on with each stage. Let me start with stage number one. This is where you insert the hull. Okay, stage number one, insert the hull. Stay with me now. In this process, what you do is you have a deep priming pin that drops down into the hull as the hull is dropping down into a collet. The deep priming pin pops the old expended primer out, it drops it into a tube located in the middle of the collet. That expended primer drops into a little tray here where it picks up your expended primer so you can dump them after they accumulate. And the collet at the same time is reforming the brass head uh, of the, uh, the hull. It does this so that you can load these shells into semi-automatics those are mostly the uh, the guns that actually are finicky about their loads so you want to bring it back into factory specifications and that's what that collet does at the same time you're also actuating the primer tray where you're dropping a primer as you can see they're lined up there single file 
uh, the tray actually drops a primer into the primer tube here okay so that when this mechanism drops down it drops or when the tube comes down it actually it hovers over a pocket here located on the turret right here and that's where your primer is located and what it does is that when this turret is rotated or indexed over to stage two or the next stage it the primer takes a ride and drops into another pocket located right here in stage two got this second pocket here that's where that primer sits so that when the machine drops down it actually forces the hull onto that top of that primer and seats it into the bottom or the primer pocket located in the hull at the same time powder is dropped from the powder tube into the hull obviously this is predetermined via either a standard slide bar or in this case this is a universal slide bar or a shot bar what you have here is you have in this bottle right here you got powder and that's where the powder goes into there's a pocket located in here it's an adjustable pocket and then you have your shot it also falls into an adjustable pocket in this case you're dropping an ounce and an eighth over here you're dropping powder which is I believe about 20 about 20 grains of powder powder drops down that tube the tube forces the hull onto the primer and seats the primer I think I said that already then you go to stage three say stage three is where you have your wad located on top of here okay and this is your shot tube and what it does is that it forces the hull once the machine is actuated and this thing drops down forces the wad rather into the hull and that wad sits on top of the powder it actually gets compressed onto the powder so you have a nice tight airtight um, compression chamber that's that's mainly for consistent ignition so that's what the wad does it actually forms two it has two purposes one is to form a nice pocket for your powder and also it holds your shot okay stage four located right here stay with me stage four is the beginning of your your uh, crimping process this is the crimp starting process right here that's you know, your crimp starter and it basically folds the mouth at least it starts to fold the mouth to form the crimp crimp not a crimp that's a different that's a different video okay then it rotates over to stage five where it come the process is completed the crimping process completed it actually folds the crimp down or the mouth of the uh, the hull to form a closed end and then I'll go back over here to stage six where stage six is located right here and this finalizes your crimp forms it so that it has round edges to it your shotgun shell and then when the turret rotates again your shot shell drops into this chute and into so a receptacle of some sort in this case I put a little plastic tray to pick up my uh, shells if I can show you right here I cut open a shell and it kind of shows you the nomenclature of a shotgun shell you got your primers right here your primer you got your powder right there that's that dark stuff that you can hardly see right in there you got your wad indicated by this white plastic thing it sits on top of the, uh, the powder and in the upper cup of the round holds your shot it's actually the upper part of the wad and then you have your crimp which you've already seen the crimp let me show you a crimp that's not too bad this is Remington uh, Premier STS holes that I use, or am using. Normally I use Winchester. And Winchester double A's, that is. That's a completed round, and it does this pretty fast, as you saw in the uh, first part of this video.